right. As we jump on here today, we're live streaming this on to my personal, uh, Facebook page. I meet you folks as they come on. It looks like we got a good group, a good group joining us today. A uh, couple days before Christmas, I want to say uh, thank you for being committed. Thank you for showing up every single week. Uh, I have decided next week I'm going to do a GoPro Pray Drive five day challenge. Uh, you'll see me doing that. And it's all around the habits of the top 1% of performers. So, so next week, starting on Monday, I'll be doing five straight days from noon to 1230 uh, called the GoPro five day flip the switch challenge. And it will be centered around the habits. I'll be taking one habit of the top 1% every single day next week. And we're going to be talking about going pro in the body and the mind and the heart and in the spirit, and really making a simple decision, and then backing that decision up with time, energy, money, and commitment, and so uh, I just made that decision. I thought we had so much momentum last week with that five-day challenge. I said, man, why don't we do another one? Why don't we do another one, okay? So next week, we're going to be doing that. Now, what we're talking about today on this Pray Drive for Lunch is how to create products and services that solve problems for people. And I'm going to tell you a story on where this really hit me. I have only been deep sea fishing one time. Okay. And they said, Oh, it's going to be fun. And Oh, it's going to be great. And Oh, it's going to be all these things. And I went out with five guys and we almost fell out of the boat multiple times. And, and, and uh, two guys got sick out the back and, and I'm sitting up front with the guy driving the boat and he was shorts on flip-flops and he was relaxed and he had a phone in the boat and that phone just rang and rang and rang and he'd pick it up and he'd say so and so deep sea fishing he'd say it's 400 for half a day 800 for a full day which would you like and they would literally just say i'll take a half a day i'll take a full day and he'd write their credit card information down and it just rang the whole way out there and the whole way back and i said man do you, do you call people like to sell things? He said, no. He said, this is our whole sales process. I answer the phone. I say, would you like half a day or would you like a full day? And I said, and, 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 and you sell it out. He said, man, there's only so many deep sea fishing boats. There's more demand and there is supply. It's very easy to sell. We don't have to really do anything other than market uh, and that we have a deep sea fishing with a phone number. And I, and I wrote down in my notepad because I was the nerd deep sea fishing that had a notepad <laughs> the other guys were drinking beer and throwing up out the back and i'm up front with the with the captain taking notes and i'm like all right and i wrote down in my notes guys create products that are easy to sell okay create products that are easy to sell now the what because because i've got a new product out where i spend two days with people either at the 505 where I am today or, or at the lodge or I go to their city and I spend two days with them, helping them map out their future toward monetization. It's really two days about monetizing and we're charging $25,000 for that. And, and we're selling them like hotcakes. Like I can't even get dates available fast enough for people to go, I want to spend two days with you. I'll pay the 25,000. And it's like, I was telling Eric, it's one of the easiest things we've ever sold. It, right. And, and so I started saying, why, what, 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 what is it? Because I'm going through this process right now where I'm mapping out my 2023 and I'm asking myself, what do I want to do? What products do I want to bring to the market? What do I enjoy doing? What is highly enjoyable and highly profitable? Okay. What do people, and so, so I want you to start thinking of what do people want? You see, the reason people uh, uh, we're having an easy time selling that is because people want to figure out how to monetize their talents. They're tired of struggling with it, and they want to spend one-to-one -one time with me, and I don't really coach people one-to-one -one other than in this, this mechanism where I spend two days with them. And, and the other day, I did this with the woman. At the end of the day, I said, here's seven ways you can make money with what, I, with, with what you have, okay? And she's like, boom, man, I've been going to coaching programs forever, and in and half a day, you showed me exactly how to make money with my talents. And she's like, so it's incredibly valuable. Now, what does that have to do with what we're talking about? As I go into 2023, I'm asking myself, what do people want? 
If I'm in the title business, what do your customers want? What problems do they have? What problems can you solve? What price point can you solve them at? And see, and you want to create things that are easy to sell, like Monster Producer right now is $2.97 a month. It's typically $4.99 a month, but it's $2.97 a month. It's relatively easy to sell. We don't really have any resistance to price objection. People can get their mind around uh, investing $297 in their, in their bigger future, right? It's easy to sell, right? Success school for kids. How do we get, you know, everybody wants their kids to do better. Will you invest in your kid to go through six, uh, six weeks of coaching, right? It's a relatively easy thing to sell. So, so when you're thinking about your business, ask, start by asking this question, because there's a monetization formula I teach. And the monetization formula is step one, what action do I want people to take? I want them to enroll in this, sign up for this, come to this. Okay, I want people to buy the book, flip the switch, right? That, that's an action, okay? That's an action I want people to take, all right? Two, I then go to what problem, what problem am I, am I solving for these people? And is it urgent and is it important? Ask yourself that question. Is the product you're solving urgent and is it important? And if it's not urgent and it's not important, then, then will they spend money today? Is there a sense of urgency? Like we did this thing yesterday on follow-up to millions and we had 110 people on there and then we got an event coming up on the 24th. I think 27 to 30 people purchased it. And Craig, Craig said something to me afterwards, like, well, there's no sense of urgency because it's January 24th. And people are like, well, I don't have to buy it today. I could buy it next week or the week of. And, and really, if I would have thought through that better, it'd be like, you don't get any of these fast action bonuses if you don't do it right now, right? Like if you, if you do it right now in the next hour, you get the fast action bonuses. If you don't do it in the next hour, you don't get all these extra things, man. It's just like the, at Kmart, they had that little blue light special. I know some of y'all went to Kmart at some point. And the, when the blue, when the little blue light was on, it's like things are on sale or the donut, Dunkin' Donuts. I know nobody on here goes to Dunkin' Donuts, but maybe every now and then and the lights on. And now my point is, what is easy for you to sell today? And, and, and how do you create your product suite around something that solves a problem? So step one is what action do you want them to take? Step two is what problem are you solving? Is it urgent? Is it important? Or how do you make them believe it's urgent? Okay. And it's life insurance people. It's like, man, I got to, I got to get you insured today. Okay. God forbid something happened to you. I got to, I got to get you in there. I got to get you into a coaching program today. The 297 is going away on the 31st, okay? And it's going back to 499 or back to something at a higher rate, okay? Now, so you got to create urgency. The third thing is what concept, what concept can people get their mind around, okay? Like I'm toying around with putting everything under one concept, the greatness factory. And the greatness factory is where we manufacture greatness. And you go to the greatness factory and you can enroll in business growth programs like Monster Producer, Purpose to Profit, Person of Interest, Go pro, but it all happens at the greatness factory. Like it's a big theme. Okay. So it's like, what is the concept? What is the concept? Okay. Number four is how can they, I call it taste the ice cream, or how do you let them experience what you have to offer? Okay. And almost, you know, you just think about all the people who let you have a, 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 a trial period or a sample of what it is. Or they let you try it out to see, okay, this is going to be good. It's like, right? Like you invite them to something. And once they get to something, you always have something in the future to invite people to. And I was uh, working with Derek Fossey this morning, who's one of our big clients up in Michigan. And I said, man, you need to get a date on the books. You bought 500 copies of my book. You need to put a date on the book and you need to, you need to in start inviting people to it and get them out of that doldrum and get them excited and he's like that's a great idea book launch in michigan february 16th i'm like you bought 500 books man you're gonna have to give them to somebody <laughs> so use the book to to activate excitement 
And surely to goodness, we can sell something to somebody if we get four or 500 people there, right? That's the concept, okay? So let me go through the formula one more time. I start with the action I want people to take. I ask what problem will this solve? Is it urgent? Is it important? Is it recurring? Number three, I come up with a concept. Okay, and the concept is what people are attracted to. A bad concept, it's hard to sell a bad concept. Okay, I then invite them to something in the future to taste the ice cream. Once they get there and like it, I give them a chance to take action. Okay, this pray drive for lunch is something to invite people to. It's something to put up on Facebook. It's something to chop up on Instagram and TikTok. It's something for people to see what I do for people, which is activate their drive, teach them how to find package market monetize. Then it goes to YouTube and people watch it on YouTube. And my belief is over a period of time, they're going to go, I need this guy coaching me. With, with this guy in my life, I'm going to perform at a higher level. I'm going to crystallize my calling. I'm going to go to purpose to profit. I'm going to do person of interest something. Okay, so, so what we're teaching you here today is a formula. This is what I call the monetization formula. Okay, but I want you to think of the easiest product you have to sell right now. What's the hardest product to sell and why? What's the easiest product to sell? Okay, I want you to think about what you, what concepts, you, you know, it just occurred to me last night, man, the greatness factory is a big concept. Like, like it's like the biggest, it could be the biggest concept I've ever come up with. So why are we not saying that this is it? Coach Burt founded the Greatness Factory. What do you do there? You go there to be great. Simple. It's got all everything under the umbrella. So prey drive is a big concept. You go to the Greatness Factory to activate your prey drive. Okay, that's right. You go to the Greatness Factory to, to, to find your purpose. You go to the Greatness Factory to take your kids so they can become great. Okay, so, so it's just... Uh, I just keep chewing on it, okay? Uh, sheep ruminate. Anybody know what that means? Ruminate, okay? Korean's real smart. Co Korean, what do you think ruminate means? It's when you chew it over and over and over. There you go. Like a, like a, like sheep chew, chew, chew on something. They ruminate on it. They just chew it. Kind of gross, but they just chew it and spit it back up and chew it some more. Well, that's what I do with concepts, and I really believe when you have great concepts, it's like, man, people are attracted to a concept. Before you become known, create great concepts, okay? So as we finish the year, it's like, when is my prey drive at and high? What do I love doing? What's easy to sell? What are products and services are easy to sell? And what concept can I anchor this to? Okay, what concept can I anchor this to? Like the mortgage people, I don't know who came up with the, the buy down or the three, two, one. It's a good concept. It's a good concept, right? You pay, you pay this percentage today, you pay this. It could it get a person to take action? Maybe. It, it might if a person really wants to buy something bad enough. Okay, so, so I just want you thinking today, how do you create products that are easy to sell? How do you come up with a new concept? What is going to be your concept for 20? 23. What, what can you see yourself going all in on? I wrote down in my notes last night when I was going kind of through this, through this session, because I had a person kind of facilitate, facilitate a thought a process pattern for me last night. And I was taking all these notes in my notebook and I wrote down right in the middle, this is it. Finding the one thing you can go all in on. When's the last time you went all in on one concept? I want you to think about it. When's the last, like I went all in on pray drive, flip the switch. Look at everything I'm doing to sell this freaking book. <laughs> I mean, look at how much push and force and energy I'm using to, to push this book, right? It's all consuming, man. It's like, it, it's like, like typically this time of year is time that I, that I, that I kind of have a week or two reju what's called a rejuvenation cycle. If you look at my schedule, you know what it says? Rejuvenation cycle for coach Burke. I planned that last, last uh, December. And because the book's coming out on the 31st, I'm like, man, I can't take a rejuvenation cycle. I got to take a get it done cycle. So in my rejuvenation cycle, I'm having to fight through to get this book because the book was supposed to come out last year and it's coming out on January 31st. So I, so I was taking all these notes last night and I'm like, right in the mail, I'm like, this is it. How do you help every, people find the one thing they can go all in on versus dabble? How many of you are dabblers? 
you dabble a little bit over here and a little bit over there and a little bit you're pretty good over here and it's not it's like everybody's got to find their craig what's it called when they like find their one thing there's a there's a name for it like you and i were talking about black swans which are unexpected events but there's yeah uh gary keller's book the one thing is um he says you know it's what you should do not what you could do there's a specific thing that everybody should be doing i don't know exactly the specific yeah. term you're looking for but yeah there's there's definitely the mechanism the root thing the the Pareto, Pareto principle the 20 percent you know is 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 doing the work and the 80 percent is just something that you're being bothered with or the people that just aren't producing so uh, yeah. i think i know you have something specific in mind but i'm not sure what that is yeah yeah it could be finding your calling but i like how you said it it's like it's like i like crystallizing it's crystallizing your calling somebody said that uh in master the stage oh, okay that'd be a great that could be a good book title i help people crystallize their calling okay now what i'm saying is when you lock into this one thing is it easy to sell or hard to sell and if it's hard to sell, then you got to step back and go, okay, why is it hard? To, why is it so hard to sell this? Why is it so hard to sell this product or service? Okay. I, I was thinking the other day, why, why that, why the guys at the Mercedes dealership are such bad salespeople. And you know why Craig, they're such bad salespeople. The cars sell themselves. You go, you look at it, you like it, you buy it. There's really no sale to be made. Okay. People that go over there know it's going to be expensive. They know they're buying a Mercedes. There's not a lot of haggling. It's like, do you want it? Because there's, there's three of them. And if you don't buy it, somebody else is going to come in this afternoon. Uh, I went and looked at, looked at one last week and Tim McGraw had bought it. The one I was going to look at, Tim McGraw had bought two days before. He's like, man, we don't have any more. Tim McGraw came in and bought it. So Tim McGraw don't come in and say, hey, man, can I get a deal on this? Can I get a deal on this my back? He just walks in and says, hey, it's $300,000. i will take two of those. Okay. So my point is there is no sales. They don't have to sell it. Because it's the product sells itself, which is why they can't keep them in stock. You can't get a Range Rover right now until 2020, the new Range Rovers. You can't even get them until 2024. They don't even have any to sell. They don't even have to give you, right? So it's like there's a waiting list. They've actually stopped the waiting list because it's so long they can't build them. So it's like, you know, I, I don't understand. So, so I'm thinking about my product suite going out of everything we have. What product would sell the easiest and the best? that is highly enjoyable and highly profitable. Okay, now I got an insurance partner named Ryan Chiquelli up in Michigan selling annuities like crazy. I mean, he's selling like 10, $20 million worth of annuities because people are moving their money to annuities because they're safer investments and they don't lose money. And it's like, he's like, this market is heyday for an annuity salesman because it's so easy to sell them, right? Because people are just moving millions of dollars into them. And, um, uh, and so it's like, okay, that's a great concept, moving millions in minutes. Okay, it's safe harbor investing, it's safe investing is what he's saying. So, so my point to you is, what is it for you? And I really encourage you over the next week to find the one thing, crystallize the calling, the one thing, the one concept you're going to go all in on next year. What is it? For me, like I said, it may be the greatness factory. It, it's, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be something that I can build everything under and I want it to be easy to sell. Okay. Now let's stop here and let's take some questions. Uh, why do you think people struggle with this Korean finding the one thing versus dabbling with a lot of things? Well, it depends on their, their mindset, right? A lot of times it's a scarcity mindset. We feel like we need to grasp at straws, just hoping something will stick. Yep. And, and if you're an opportunist, you know, and, and you see opportunity, you pursue that opportunity. Uh, and so it's like, hey, we can make money seven ways. Let's pursue all of these things. But could pursuing the seven things keep you from being great at the one thing? And that's really what you got to ask yourself is if you could lock in and say, this is it. So, if I, so, so Tim, are you with EXP? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's say I, I was with EXP and I just was hell bent on 2023. I'm going to go out and recruit 400 agents to my team, or I'm going to get six studs, or I'm going to write, and I like lock in. This is my concept. This is it. This is the one thing I can go all in on, and I'm going to build and I'm going to commit to this, and I'm going to back this commitment up with actions, and I'm going to focus on it every mm -hmm. single day. Like there's going to be no days I don't focus on it. Like, like that's what the book has really taught me trying to make the book a bestseller. It's taught me that you got to focus on it every day. 
You can't go week. You can't go week without focusing on it. Okay. And by the way, you know, you, you heard, you guys heard that talk I had with the publisher the other day about, they told me they were taking off between the 15th and J January 2nd. They somehow, after I sent them that email, found somebody to count those books for me. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, we do have one dude who could do that for you, coach. Thank you. But I had to push like that to get them to, to go, this is a big deal, man. We can't take two weeks off when we're, when we're 30 something days away from the book coming out. Okay. We don't have time to take two weeks off. Okay. So Tim, what's your question on this? Um, well, you kind of started to answer it when it came to EXP, but what are, what are other concepts that you've seen when it comes to real estate? I guess my mind goes to finding either like farming an area or finding which clients I work with best, kind of evaluating the past year, who I liked. Yeah, who I, I think you got to go my... back. I think you got to go back if you're recruiting and ask, go through the monetization formula. What do I want? What action do I want them to take? I want them to schedule a strategy call with me. I want them to schedule a three-way call with me and my top line person. I want them to, right? Then you got to say, what problem do these agents have that I can potentially solve for them that they would want to come to me? And there's a concept, right? It's like, hey, I'm going to focus on, like me and Jay and Al did follow up to millions yesterday, you know? And it's just a concept. We wrote a book called Million Dollar Follow-Up for Real Estate Agents. Okay, it's just a concept. Now, what, what's the purpose of the book? To just generate leads. It's to generate people for them to recruit. And it's to generate leads for me to offer our coaching services to. That's the whole purpose of it. It's not to make millions of dollars off the book. It's actually just to use the book to, to generate leads. And we don't need more money. We need more people. Okay. So, so that, that was a creative way to generate leads. So what is the concept? Okay. What is the concept? It's like, we help people do this. Okay. So that's what you got to ask yourself. If you're trying to recruit people, why would they be attracted to you? And they'd be attracted to you because you solve some kind of problem for them. Mm -hmm. How many of you guys are attracted to the concept of prey drive? Okay. How many of you think the greatness factory is a big enough concept for me to go all in on? Okay. Mm -hmm. And to just put everything under the greatness factory. It's one big umbrella and it's, it's like going to Harvard university, but, and you pick which courses you want to go to. Okay. So th this is the kind of stuff I'm going, but, but Cardone didn't start with 10 X. Uh, I don't I don't know if my let started with max out. I don't know if bet David started with, you know, he didn't start with your next five moves. Uh, I think what you do is you ruminate on these concepts and then it's like, boom, this is it. <laughs> like, this is the thing I'm supposed to, this is it right here. And that's kind of the, the, the revelation that I had last night. And revelation is a sudden dramatic moment. And if the concept's not that strong, I remember when we did purpose to profit because we're going to bring it back and turn it into a, a one of our courses is I was sitting with, with the team and they kept asking me, what do you help people do? And I said, man, I think I kind of help people discover their purpose. And then I teach them how to make money with it. And somebody in the room said purpose to profit. And I said, yes, <laughs> Boom, concept. See, that's a big concept. Now, what problem R Ryan Taylor does it solve? 87% of people they say uh, do never find their purpose. They live their entire life. They never crystallize their purpose. So, so the concept solves a problem, which is why it was such a big concept. By the way, we did over a million dollars in sales. Uh, Paul, we did over a million dollars in sales from that concept, purpose to profit. Everybody see that? And, and, and see, so, so look at how powerful the concept is and the concept attracted. Now we did that with 242 people per event somewhere around there, which is, which is, uh, you know, Craig, pretty remarkable if I say so myself, make a million dollars with four, with 400 people, folks, you're, you're really, you're clicking, you're, you, that tells you there's proof of concept there. Everybody see that? Because we've tried other concepts and we didn't make a million dollars with them. So I, I, I just want you to really dial it in here at the end of the year. And I, my hope is that I'm activating your prey drive to to kind of flip the switch in you to go, you know what? I don't really have a concept. I'm not real clear on what product that's easy to sell. I'm not sure on what problem I'm solving for people. And I don't have a good process for selling it. So when I started doing these $25,000 days or two days, it was because people would ask me, you know, I want to be coached by you one-to-one. -one. And I said, well, I don't do one-to-one -one coaching. And then I started saying, you know what? I'll coach you for 90 days for 25,000. Or if you just want to knock it out in two days, 
just and I'll lock down at the lodge with you for two days. And they're like, I'll take that option. Everybody took the two day option. Everybody. And it's like, okay, we got a new product. Now, what are we going to call it? The making of a coach. And there's three ways you can participate with that. Option A, two days with coach for 25,000. Option B, certification. And that ranges between five and 10,000, depending on where it is in the market. And three, uh, or you could just go through Michael Burt School of Speaking, Coaching, and Writing, and Person of Interest. And we're calling that the Making of a Coach series. Where do you get that at, Craig? Down at the Greatness Factory. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anybody have any questions for me? I, I've got a, a statement or a question, Coach, if I may. Yep. yep. The, uh, you know, the, the reason that I first got involved with your coaching program, uh, uh, Eric White and I connected because I'd seen you on a Cardone feature where you used it. What, first time I ever heard the term prey drive and you coined it on that interview. This is uh, five, six years ago. It was a while back. Yep. And I bought one of your products. But the thing is, on a Saturday night, I put an order in and somebody responded to me on a Saturday night. And later you said that you at that time, maybe you still do, I don't know, that you had people that were monitoring your phones and your your uh, website even on Saturday night because it was your understanding that a lot of people make decisions when their minds are clear on on, on weekends. That's and right. that's what got me started here on this. And I sent you a, a direct message here a minute ago. Okay. I think people would close minds and and I'm in real estate like these other fellas that you just talked to, though I'm with Colwell Banker, that people would close minds. I see it in my industry all the time seem to be the ones that are about where they are today as they were a year, uh, uh, one year ago today, is that they, they're they comfortable with the skills and the, and the uh, methods that got them here. But I think the fear factor is what's keeping them from going to the next step. To, I, I, I had a mentor years ago that said she only bets on sure things. And, yeah. I, and, and the people, I stay away from my office. God love the people at Colwell Banker in Maryland. But I try to stay out of the office because it's my the people that seem to be in there all the time, and I may get crucified for saying this, but are the ones that may be where they are today, they'll still be there a year from today. These things, and I Damaris takes care of all the bill. I don't even know if I'm paying for this or not. I don't care, but I'm happy to be here. And you know I buy a lot of your stuff. I, yeah. I'm up to five of your books so far. Thank is you. That, is that the... Uh, I didn't get to you right away, but Eric White was the guy that was the catalyst to get me to sign on at the beginning. There he is. And and it's just that I, that was one of the turning points of my real estate career is hooking up with you guys, because every time you are on Facebook or on a webinar is you say something that makes me think and take action. Yeah, I love it. Well, thank you for taking action, too. Thank you for, for, for taking action, because that's really the key part. So thank you, for Tom. Now, speaking of Eric, Eric, I want to make sure you post in here the, the, the link to the 297 special for everybody. If you're not in the program, we want you to be in the program. We want you to take, take action on that. That will go away here. at uh, it's, it's, I extended it one week. I said I was going to take it away last Friday. Craig talked me into keeping it up for another week because that's what Craig does. And uh, he actually tried to get me to take it down after just a few days. But I said, nope, I'm a, I'm a man of the people, Craig. I'm fighting for the people. Oh, I will say this. If you did uh, watch the million dollar thing yesterday that with him, Jay and Al, uh, he didn't realize it when he was actually showing everybody at the end, but I did sneak in that uh, time delay. Uh, so 24 hours, which is actually now an hour from today, we're going to go message everybody who was in there and say you got one hour left because those bonuses are going away. He didn't know I did that, but I did that. And so I'm not sure if he saw that. So you have to make and a I, sense I, of urgency. I love it. I love it. I, love I had it. a call before this where the guy was hemming and hawing. It was literally an awkward, almost minute of silence, but you know, you either know or you don't. So if you don't, I would just say, just don't do it. If you're not, do it, make a decision and move on. All right. I got time for one question from Korean and I want to answer Tim's question uh, before we get you off here today. Uh, go ahead, Korean. What's your question? So I think that what sometimes can happen in this process is that we start to realize that what we thought was our one thing is not actually our one thing, right? Yeah. And then you almost went into a little bit of an identity crisis because you kind of planned your life based upon that being your one thing. So I, my question is, how would you help, like, how would you recommend those of us in the room who are kind of coming to that spot where they realize that what they thought was their one thing is not truly it, determine what really is the one thing? Like, what's the best process to figure that out? Well, I think it's, I think it's a process of, of refinement, of, of doing the, what I would call doing the work. Uh, Cal Newport calls it deep work. 
you know, me sitting there for two or three hours last night, just, just kind of facilitating and working through the concept is, you know, and me doing it over and over. It's why I do A to B so much until eventually becomes clear. It's like, you don't find your purpose. It finds you, you discover it, but to discover something, you got to go out into the woods and work through it and ruminate on it. And then it's like, boom, this is it, man. Okay. Covey used to ask the four questions. What do I love doing? What am I great at doing? Where is there a need in the world I can fulfill? Uniquely fulfill. Uniquely fulfill. And what is my conscience telling me? That's the question Craig said. What should I be doing? Okay. And so you got to remember, I came up with the concept of the Greatness Factory as a high school basketball coach. Okay. I used to say, thanks for bringing your daughter to the Greatness Factory because we're going to manufacture her greatness. And then God gave me the vision in 2016 to make it a physical building, a physical space. Um, so, so, you know, it just, so now we're manifesting it, right? I, mean, I was down there walking around in it last night and it's, it's, we're about to start building it. So I think, I think then it hit me last night that this is the big concept, man. Maybe this is what we've been running toward. Okay. Now, Tim, let me get yours and then we'll get you guys off here. Uh, you didn't, you missed, we did a th training on follow-up yesterday, Cheryl. What I've been talking about is me kind of having some big discoveries last night uh, down at the 505, working at the Greatness Factory, the new one, and just kind of working through a concept and then kind of coming to a big realization that the big concept is the Greatness Factory. And it is where we manufacture greatness. And, and so that was a big revelation for me as we kind of brand and rebrand going into 2023. Now, Tim, the way you let people taste the ice cream is you invite them to something. An open house is a taste of ice cream. An event is taste the ice cream. And sometimes a strategy call is, an, is to let them taste the ice cream. Let me get on the phone with you and do some coaching. Uh, the way Dave Blanchard, you know, sold me on his coaching program is he did the habit finder test. He came back and he read the results. He showed me where my challenges would be. And then he said, would you like my help with this? It's $15,000 for six months. Would you like my help with these things? That was his closing question. That's it. No pressure sale. He, sh he gives you one free coaching session plus the habit finder. And he says, this is what I think. This is how I can help you. Would you like my help? And this is a great closing question. Eric, would you like my help? Craig, would you like my help with this? Okay. And if you don't, it's okay, man. Move on. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. Okay. Or would you like my help with it? All right, Tom. One more I, was out, I was out in the country last week. Damaris and I, uh, got me to take a, a vacation first time in several years so i missed a lot of this stuff but i did catch your uh the seminar that uh, i don't see him on or that craig mentioned a minute ago and i watched it this morning uh i, I watched a portion of it this morning and i, I have a notebook now for just coach bird notes that uh, apparently there's going to be a series or a webinar or something either you or craig could you reach out to me and give me those details uh of what needs to be done to sign up for whatever the follow-up process beyond the, yeah, Craig, will you po do you have that link for him to register for the follow-up with me and jay kinder now stacy yeah i could do it right yeah i'll jump right in there I, I only got about 15 minutes into it but it, it took me about a half hour 45 minutes to get into it because i kept replaying things that you guys were talking about it's so good yep yeah, and uh just so you know it's going to be a webinar um it's like a four-hour webinar is that right it's our master class i think is what we're calling it and uh there's you know like i said you got about an hour to get some of the bonuses that are already in there uh you're i'll love Direct yeah. message it right now. It's how to reach me. Oh, sure. I'll just drop it in the group for anyone who else might want to check it out. But give me one second. It's a partner phone. Okay. I think I have it too. If you, if you, if you, if you need that. Craig, Craig, Craig. Here you guys go. Nice. Thank uh, you. In the chat. Okay. All right. It's been a great session, guys. Okay. If I don't see you before Christmas, Merry Christmas. Thank you for believing in me as your coach. Love you. Appreciate you. Remember, I, I will be announcing five-day GoPro Pray Drive Challenge next week, every, every day at noon. Uh, we do Pray Drive for lunch. We're going to keep doing it until the book comes out, until we go all the way to the bestseller list. So if you hadn't got the book, please get it. Get all the freebies that come along with it, including the January 13th. Craig, you got one more thing? Yeah, yeah. And just so you know, uh, in anticipation of this launch in January, we are going to be doing what we're calling a launch club or a launch team. And uh, in that, there's going to be a little bit more private access. So people who had bought the book want to promote it. You know, we, we usually look at like the 10 or more category. But I mean, if you're somebody who 
just doesn't have the coin or, or whatever in that lower, just message me, Craig at Coach Bird, if you want to get involved, help spread the news for us. I can let you know this uh, privately right now. You are going to get an access to the um, the manuscript early. So you're going to get a chance to get in there before everybody else gets it on the 31st. But by doing so, we are asking for something in return. That something is going to be a, you know, a testimony at some point. Whether you love the book or hate the book, we don't really care. We think you're going to love it. Um, but you know, we do ask you uh, at some point to go and let people know about it. So in launch week, we'll we'll have a little bit more things for you to do. But yeah, there's gonna be some more stuff that you'll gain access to and all that good stuff. So if you're in there, Craig at Coach Bird, if you ever need me, uh, that'll help you, uh, you know, get dialed in. But I will be reaching out to the whole community. Whoever purchased the book, we know who you are. We tagged you properly. Uh, you'll get some messages from us soon. All right. You guys have a great day. Appreciate you. See you soon. And I'm going to keep posting. So just, just, just follow along with us, okay? Love you guys. I'm here, I'm here forever. Let's go. You ain't going to never get rid of me. <laughs> All right. See you guys. All right.